Hey everyone, I wanted to give you a short video to show you how to manipulate our data inside of StatCrunch. So I have actually already brought in the data into StatCrunch and I'm gonna give you a link so that you can access this data and you don't have to do any importing yourselves. This should save you a lot of hassle, but there are a few quirks that I wanted to tell you about. First of all is the census tract. If you look at this, the numbers in this column, it says something like 5.3011041 e to the 10. Well, that's scientific notation. And that doesn't make sense because our census tracts were actual integers. So if you click on any one of these cells, you'll see the actual census tract numbers. You'll notice that there's a lot of similarities just by looking at the exponential notation, but if you click on the cells, then you'll see the census tracts. You really don't need this information unless you want to refer to in your paper census tract five three da 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 da. That's the only time you'd really need to reference a census tract. Further over in the spreadsheet, if you use the little slider bars to go up and down, you'll notice that there's a lot of the word null, and that's because there were no data values there. So I am clicking and highlighting all those null values and I'm pushing delete so that they're not there. So for whatever reason, we don't have data in those spots. And you don't have to delete all of the data, all of the, the null values. I guess I do because it all looks clean. If you're going to work with the variable, then I'd go ahead and delete the null values. I would also make sure to mention in any of your analysis that, oh, by the way, not every census tract had data and my sample size was 75 or uh, not the sample size, it's actually the number of tracts, it's a population or the population size was 60. So you'll probably want to do some basic calculations and make some graphs on this data for projects. You'll have to be able to recognize what variables are categorical and which variables are um, quantitative in nature. So let's say I want to do some statistics. I'm gonna go and scroll over and find a, another variable over here. Um, let's see, tract Asian. That means if I go to the, the data dictionary, if you will, it says these are the number of Asian people who belong in each of those census tracts. So if I want to do some statistics, like do summary statistics on a column. I can click that and then I have to go through this list and choose the columns that I want to do my statistics on. So I'm going to scroll through until I find the variable tracked Asian and when I click on it, it slides it over to the right and that means I will be doing statistics on just that variable. If you want to do multiple variables, you can See that little yellow pop-up bar? It says with more than select more with the shift and click or the command and click, depending on if you're a Mac or Windows computer. So I just want to use this one variable. And then if I go down and choose the statistics, notice that a number of these statistics have been chosen for you. Mean, sample size, standard deviation, quartiles, if you want to add some more, just scroll through and you'll select what you want. Remember to push the um, shift or the command button and you can get more statistics like maybe I want the IQR and oh, that's about all. Oh, maybe the mode. If you want to rearrange the order of this, unclick everything and click everything in the order that you do like. And now we're ready to compute. So what do we have here? We now have um, the, the variable tract Asian. There are 104 uh, census tracts. Yep, that looks right. The average number of Asian people in that tract is 168.3. Um, the variance, not as useful, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Standard deviation, this can be used, this might be useful. Uh, standard error, not as useful right now, so. Uh, going back to standard deviation, it's the average, de average deviation from the mean. 
The median number of Asian people in these census tracts is 139. The range, so that you know, min to max distance is 846. The fewest number of Asian people in a census tract is 14, and the most is 860. And again, this is for all of our census tracts in uh, uh, Clark County. And then here's our first and third quartile, the IQR and the mode. So you can see the distribution based on how far apart the, the quartiles are, because remember there's 25% of data in between each of those quartiles. So let's also look at a graph of the data. So we have our statistics computed. Um, maybe I want to con construct a histogram or a box plot. I'm going to go to graph histogram and I'm going to choose my same variable, tracked Asian. And I can make some adjustments later, but right now I'm just going to push compute because it's really easy to get a graph out. And then I get a feel for the data and then I can go back and make changes. So based on this uh, data set, this one column, uh, StatCrunch decided to go with a scale of 100s, and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bins to the data. And if you hover over any of the bins, you can see the frequency for that category. And it will also tell you how many people fit into uh, that span. So there's 20 people that are, sorry, not 20 people, let's think back. This is frequencies of census tracts. So there are 20 census tracts that have anywhere from 200 to 299 people who are Asian. If we go down to another bar, there is one census tract that has anywhere between 500 to 599 Asian identifying people in census tracts. So um, you can see the skewness. We might want to talk about the shape of the data. You might want to look at the center of the data, which is convenient because we have the statistics right up here. We know where the average is. And I'm going to do a little bit of a modification to the graph. So if I click on options and then edit, I can, uh, let's start, let's start the bins. Start at zero, and let's say I'm going to make a bin width of 25. This might be a little ridiculous, but I'm going to try it out and see what happens. And I'm going to mark the mean and the median with these different colors. You can choose any color you like for the mean and median. And let's see, color scheme. I can put in some x-axis labels. Um, count of uh, Asian residents. Y-axis label is the number of census tracts, or you could say frequency. Title, how many Asian residents are there per census tract? in Clark County, Washington. All right, um, now when I push compute again, I'll get all of those changes. So there's my title and then number of census tracts identifying the vertical axis. Count of Asian residents is down below. Here's our mean and median. Let's say the, the red is the median. So the green is the mean. Oh, there you go, green mean. <laughs> and when the bin width is 25, we get a little bit more detail as to the number of census tracts that have frequencies of Asian people living in those tracts. Notice that the, the, the bin width is given with a square bracket on the left side and a round bracket on the right side. That's because the lower number is included inside that bin and the upper boundary is the start of the next bin. 
So technically we could have up to 24.9999999 Asian people in a census tract, but uh, we're not gonna have a fraction of a person. So that's why I would say 24, zero to 24 in that um, group. If we're talking about different data where we don't have discrete data, then it's definitely important to know where the, uh, the bin ends. All right. So um, what might we say about this data? We might want to talk about the, uh, the center, the shape, and the spread of uh, the distribution. So that means mean or median, the IQR or standard deviation for spread, um, the shape of the data. So is it left skewed, right skewed, or symmetric? Do we see any outliers? I definitely see some unusual census tracts. So it looks like there are three census tracts which have four more Asian people living in them compared to the rest of the census tracts. And there's even uh, seven census tracts that have very few Asian people, you know, like you know potentially zero. I guess we can look on our data set to see if zero people identify as Asian in those census tracts. All right, um, I hope this is helpful to you. It should get you started on how to uh, look at the data, get some statistics, and make some graphs for uh, quantitative variables.